Hey team, welcome back to The Basics. So I'm just about to put out a video talking about the weed, getting into the weeds of how to choose a firearm. But before I do, I just have to do one more big picture video that sort of puts this very small sliver of the self-defense conversation in context. Because if you think that just buying one of these and carrying it with you or putting it in your car, or having one in the house is enough to protect you and your loved ones, and you don't have to do anything else, I would say you're probably setting yourself up for failure. Um, I believe, like I mentioned in my first video, that this is one of the better, easiest things you can do, just something you can buy to sort of equalize the playing fields and set yourself up for success. But there are a ton of other skills that you need to have in addition to, and I would say prior to getting one of these. This is not just like a catch-all, safety net. This is one tool that you should have in your toolbox that you're going to use in a specific scenario. But statistically speaking, that scenario is not going to be something that's going to happen all the time. And if you think that that's the only tool that you should grab for any scenario, uh, you're probably wrong. And then also, if you think that you're going to be prepared to use that tool just because you have it or you watch my videos or whatever, then you're probably wrong. There's character traits, there's skill sets that you need to develop. Uh, in order to be successful when you employ a firearm. Now we're gonna talk about these in the future. I'm just starting off with the firearms piece because I think it's hardest to develop a sense of proficiency with it. Um, so once you develop a, a proficiency with the firearm, then you can sort of start thinking about how you're gonna use it in your day to day life. And then these are where some of the character traits we can start focusing on more. Um, but like I said, we'll talk about it more in the future. I wanna just cover them just so you know what I'm talking about. And I think one of the most important things is gonna be your mindset. And that, you know, some people like to call it the warrior spirit. I think that's a fair nomenclature for it because if you're in some sort of a fight, you really have to have that warrior spirit to be able to go and overcome adversity. And what I mean by that is you have to just have the focus on what's being done, um, to not let all the negative thoughts and fear, courage is another thing we'll talk about. You don't want those negative thoughts and fear to be able to keep you from doing what you need to do. Um, you wanna have a lot of discipline with training. You wanna have a lot of tenacity. Like all those things are sort of encapsulated within that warrior spirit that we'll talk about. Um, and there's a lot of ways to develop it. Uh, it's, it's, it's sort of a character trait that you can practice and um, really sort of embody. Uh, I don't believe you have to be born with it. Of course, some people have character traits that lend itself better to that than others. But anyways, we'll, we'll talk about more of that later. But if you don't have the warrior spirit needed to go ahead and use one of these things, if you just think that just by whipping it out and pointing at somebody that that's gonna do the trick, uh, you might be setting yourself up for failure. The next one is situational awareness. And this is huge because situational awareness more often than not will allow you to identify a problem before it becomes imminent. So what I mean by that is if there, if, it, if you're walking out to your car in the parking lot and it's dark and you're just on your phone in your own little world, you're allowing any potential threat that's out there to get right up close and personal to where you have absolutely no advantage. But if you just take a second, and it might be hard to do this at first, but if you practice it, it gets a lot easier and it's almost something you can do subconsciously to where like even myself, when I'm walking around in the parking lot on my phone, I can still maintain situational awareness because I'm intentionally doing it even though I'm looking at my phone. Um, what that allows you to do is identif uh, identify a problem or a potential problem before it becomes super close to you so you can take other actions to mitigate it. Um, and that's only gonna help you out in a crime sort of situation, active shooter situation. And really it's just good for life. I mean, how often do you see somebody walking around just completely oblivious with their phone and just leads to all sorts of problems. So situational awareness is huge. Um, Another huge, huge thing that we have to know and understand and know how to apply are laws. So basic firearms laws, how to get guns, how to where and when to possess them, um, what types you can have, all of those things are important, but also the law, understanding the law of self-defense. Um, and you see in the news all the time, somebody whips out a gun and shoots somebody and then they go to jail. Um, one, that's really, really bad because you're in jail, but two, it's bad because you've most likely taken a person's life who didn't need to have their life taken. It's, it's two tragedies at the same time. When just having a, a better understanding of the laws and then being able to use some of these other skills that we'll talk about in a second or would, would just avoid both of those problems. You stay out of jail, that person doesn't die. Um, 
I'm not an expert in it. I'm trying to become one. I've been exposed to a little bit through my own research, a little bit at law school, but I'm going through this book right now by Andrew Baca, B-A-C-A. -A. Sorry if I mispronounced his name, but it's a pretty good overview of the law of self-defense, which is fairly consistent between states, but then he really explains how to apply it really well and sort of the differences between state laws. So it's called The Law of Self-Defense. I would highly recommend you read it um, because there are definitely scenarios where you pulling this out and using it are going to be unlawful and you could very easily find yourself in jail. Even times when you are lawfully allowed to use this, sometimes you can do things after the fact, something you say to the police, or maybe it's just like a little bit on the line, you could still find yourself in jail or at least going through the criminal or, or even civil uh, litigation process. So you need to have an understanding of what that looks like before you decide to pull the gun. Uh, lastly, we'll just cover some other defensive skills besides the use of firearms. Physical ability, like are you in shape enough to run and move and fight with somebody? That's a pretty easy thing, I think, to say yes or no to, and it's a really easy thing to develop. Um, Empty-handed skills. Is this the only tool that you have to fight somebody or can you have a, an escalation of force? Like, can I start with my hands? Can I move on to something else before I get to my firearm? Because um, there, there are plenty of situations where you might need to use your just your hands to de-escalate or not to de-escalate, to um, like remove or stop a threat. Uh, but you couldn't just jump straight to your firearm. So knowing how to use your hands is huge especially when you're in the clinch or, or a real close encounter where you might need to get your firearm, but you can't until you create some space or do some other stuff with your hands. Um, a big, big thing is verbal and social skills. If your default in a, in a social negative encounter is to escalate and to make tempers rise, that's a bad issue for you, especially when you start talking about concealed carry. Um, using your verbal skills to de-escalate a situation, I think is one of the best skills you can have to help prevent you from having to use one of these. Cause you should only want to use these, you should never want to have to use these, but you should only use it if you really, really have to. So jumping straight to this in some sort of a testy confrontation when you could have just talked the situation down is a big mistake. Um, and then lastly, just talking about sort of planning. Um, and there's probably a bunch that I'm forgetting, but uh, planning is just sort of saying, okay, am I just going to wing every single thing I do in life and the next thing I know I've put myself in a really bad situation because I didn't take five minutes ahead of time to just think about the implications of what I was getting myself into. Um, I'm going to be downtown. I'm going to be drunk. I don't have a ride home. So now I'm kind of wandering around. I don't have a weapon on me because I've been drinking and now it's really easy for someone to take advantage of me or um, oh, I want to go on this trip, but I didn't do my research, so now I'm driving through a really bad part of town, and now I'm again opening myself up to a threat that I didn't have to ordinarily. So just consider all of these other areas that you need to be proficient in just in order to be able to use this effectively um, and as ways where you might not have to use this, which is of course the goal is not to have to use this. Um, Continue to watch the videos and I'm gonna teach you how to use firearms. I'm gonna teach you how to select them. I think that's the next video that I'm gonna put out probably today is um, how to actually go about choosing a weapon for you so you can start training and becoming proficient. Um, but, but at the same time, be considering, okay, what are the other areas of my life that I could be more proficient in to help me in this self-protection uh, desire of yours?